morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, natural energy processing is a research area uh, of the technologies covering understanding, and analyzing, and processing languages using computers. Um, actually, most of us are using natural energy processing technologies every day, unwittingly, because web search engines, automatic machine translations, and email, uh, jump email filtering, all these technologies are supported by natural energy processing. Uh, in recent, in the uh, statistics, in 2009, there are more than 7,900 distinct languages in the world. Among them, 393 have speakers, more than 1 million speakers. So, unfortunately, <coughs> most of these languages are not supported by well-developed natural language processing technologies. You can see there are huge uh, marketing, uh, market uh, opportunities there. For example, Azeri is one is a language uh, has this, um, more than 20 to 30 million speakers who is living in Azerbaijan and Iran. Uh, but there are very few language uh, tools for this language, and the more worse is that there are almost no language resources ready to develop this kind of technologies. Deep learning is a form of machine learning using the computer models, with the computing models, uh, which is mainly uh, inspired by the structure of human, human brain. So deep learning uh, obtained huge uh, success in speech recognition, visual, and image processing in recent years. Now, its success, its success is extending <coughs> into the area of natural entry processing. We can see this by the uh, dramatically increasing number of research papers related to deep learning in the top conferences in this area. So one would ask why deep learning is so successful in natural energy processing. What's the difference of deep learning and other machine learning technologies? What opportunity, opportunity will deep, uh, deep learning bring to natural energy processing? So it is not easy to answer all these questions very shortly, but I would like to share a piece of my understanding about, uh, about this with you. In traditional natural language processing, texts are expressed as a sequence of words, which is discrete symbols or tokens. But in deep learning, all the language units include words, phrases, sentences, documents, or even characters morphemes are expressed as uh, in the form of real-valued vectors in a continuous space, which is quite different uh, as discrete symbols. So th in my opinion, this change is essential. It changed the building blocks for the natural language processing technology. And we cannot un underestimate the impact of this change. Hmm. We can consider the uh, similarly consider the history of building materials of houses. In prehistory uh, time, houses are only built by uh, stones, by wood, by mud. So only when uh, the bricks and cements are created, are uh, invented, normal people can afford. Uh, living in solid house, and only after the invention of uh, in reinforced uh, concrete in mid 19th century, it is possible to build in the square scraps and huge <coughs> huge structures. So now the same thing happened in natural language processing. Deep learning not only greatly improved the performance of most NLP <coughs> tasks, but also makes many previously impossible NLP tasks possible. In ADAPT, we are investigating 
the use of deep learning to, serve, to solve some difficult NLP tasks, which seems impossible in the past. One of these tasks is machine translation for morphologically rich languages. Many languages have highly complicated morphology, like Finnish, Czech, Turkish, Russian, uh, Japanese. All these languages are morphologically rich languages. That means the base form of one word, one single word of these languages can have more than tens or thousands of variations. <laughs> this leads to a uh, very severe problem for machine translation. This problem is called auto vocabulary problem because most of these variations of a word has never appeared in the training corpus. So the system is not able to translate them without seeing them before. In, the, in deep learning, just in recent several months, some new models are proposed to solve this problem. These models do differently as before. They translate in the subword level or character level rather than in the word level. So these models solve this problem quite naturally and very effectively. The new models outperform the original, the previous model in large margin. Our group <coughs> contributed to these models by incorporating morphologically uh, dictionaries in both source side and target side. Our model outperforms the state-of-art model in English to German, English to Russian, and English to Farsi language. The, com uh, the contribution of our, of our work is the combination of the linguistic knowledge and uh, deep learning models. This is regarded very difficult before. Another problem we are dealing with is machine translation for zero resource languages by vocabulary adapted, uh, adaptation from closed languages. So let's get, get back to our very. Because there are no uh, parallel corpus between Azeri and English, so it is not possible to build uh, a very English machine translation system directly. We, the, the good thing is Azeri is very close to Turkish, and we have a large amount of parallel corpus between Turkish and English. So we first train a neural machine translation system between Turkish and English, and then we adapt the word embeddings for Turkish to the word embeddings to Azeri by a bilingual dictionary. So by this way, we have uh, built a trend uh, Azeri English translation in our center, in Adapt Center, with the performance with a blue score of 22.5, which is much higher than Google Translate, which the, with the performance of 14.3. Also, this system output, uh, is much better than the system developed by Azerbaijan government. So, in summary, deep learning changed the building blocks for natural language processing. Also, it brought huge <coughs> opportunities for natural language processing. Deep learning is not a new technology, but deep learning for natural language uh, processing is quite new. It is still developing very fast. And we're looking forward to more and more successful story for using deep learning in natural language processing. Thank you.